Hey everybody, it is Monday, March 15th. Uh, the year marches on. Um, we got nice rain last night and it's still uh, off and on this morning. Got up and I was, I was glad that before I went to sleep last night, I pulled in all the dog pads on the patio and put the hammock you know, in the garage. <laughs> it's just, the damn things take forever to dry out uh, once, once they get soaked. Uh, been to the uh, post office this morning, dropped off more books and, and a bunch of uh, T-shirts. So this is still going to be a, a bunch of people running around with my beard on their shirt again. It's, it's, I, I, I just wonder how those get explained. I think it's pretty funny. You know, it was a really, it's a, it's a cute idea. Um, so I uh, have a few more things to do today, but um, I'm just c constantly visiting um, all music and all these things, trying to figure out what I've done. <laughs> and I came across another project that was really, uh, uh, it was a good project. It was a transitional project, but um, I'm not going to talk about the, the, the Grammy Awards. The only thing I was really uh, bummed about was the um, Grammy premiere show which is the thing we love doing and we couldn't do this year because of COVID, um, which is the, the show that actually takes place before the Grammys show actually begins. It's a daytime show. And we do, we have a great band for it. Cheche Alara is our musical director on that show. And he does an amazing job. And they give out, I don't know, 70 Grammys or something. like. It's like, man, it just moves all day long. And we have a huge book of material that, uh, you know, maybe 70 cues, 70 songs that we have to do in all kinds of genres because we have to do something for each genre that's being awarded and for the people that we play when they're coming up to the stage and when they're leaving the stage. Uh, it's incredible. And But this year we did... Um, Marvin Gaye's Mercy, Mercy Me. It was, they were celebrating the 50th anniversary of that song. So we did an incredible track remotely, each of us, myself, Vinnie Caliuta, Tim Pierce, all of the, the guys that um, normally do the house band, and that we each did our parts at home for the opening. And then they had each of the artists who were nominated doing, um, you know, like eight bars of the song. And, uh, and it was a really beautiful montage, and I wanted to share it after the show, so I put it up yesterday, and of course, it got blocked. <laughs> it's like, you can go on YouTube and see it. Um, it's just look up Mercy, Mercy Me, uh, Grammys 2020-21, um, and it's there. But, I mean, the fact that I, I filmed it and put it on my page, uh, it got it blocked, <laughs> Yeah, I'm real, real involved with the Grammy Museum, and and I'm constantly being asked to be on the board of the Grammys. Yet I, I do one thing that's showing off the the Grammys, and they block it. So, and the show, I'm not, I don't even want to discuss that. The only thing that bothers me with that, and it happens on almost every awards show. It happens on the Oscars, and it happens on you know all, all of them. I really get um, annoyed at the memoriam section of the show. Um, this is really, a lot of these people were giants in the industry and really paved the way for everything that's, that's happened. And um, this is kind of their last acknowledgement. Um, and uh, the fact that they, sp they spend more time focusing on the artists they have singing along with the memoriam. And it's like the memorial stuff is almost like wallpaper behind them. You, know, you see half of somebody's name and it goes by really quickly. And then they go, well, yeah, there was about a, a thousand we lost this year. So you can go to Grammy.com and, and pull up, you know, and see who died. Um, but they rush through this thing. I mean, the, the, the homage to John Prine was really great. Um, you know, th there was a couple of them in there that, that were, were okay. But this is a, a chronic problem to me with all these shows is this is like one of these things that they treat so lightly. And to me, it's one of the most profound aspects uh, of the celebration, you, would, you might want to call it. And uh, it just pisses me off that 
it's kind of brushed aside and turns into a production rather than having somebody singing in the background, like show them at the beginning and they can be singing and then really just Go through it. Just show them all. Don't do kind of a big montage of people coming in. All just show a face. You know what they did. Move on and 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 take five minutes out of the show to do something like that instead of all the uh, typical kind of banter and silliness and stuff that goes on. Just pull one of those moments and and honor the people who have passed. That's my only complaint. The rest of the show is the dog and pony act that it is. So. So that's that. I'm going to go move on with music. <laughs> that's the reason I got into the mu music business is for music. And uh, so uh, so I was looking around and, um, and I, I dug up a project uh, that, again, I take my glasses off for this. I just wrote out some notes on this. Um, this was back in 2002. And we did an album that was kind of a transitional album for Leanne Rimes because she was... Um, back in, um, at, when she was 14 years old, she won Best Newcomer, the Grammy for Best Newcomer, and her, her album, Blue, they were you know, equating her to Patsy Cline, and I mean, she was a remarkable young, you know, child singer. And she'd done a lot of albums, but she finally got to a point where she, I think, wanted to move more, more pop in, in her approach to her music. And so we did this album uh, called Twisted Angel. And that was, like I said, in 2002. And Leanne and um, Desmond Childs produced this. Um, there's a lot of orchestral stuff. So when I was looking at the notes, um, David Campbell conducted the orchestra. But um, there's a lot of people in the orchestra on this one. So I, I really didn't go through and, and pull everybody's name out of that. I just kind of basically did the rhythm section that's on all the stuff. Um, there was a couple of different rhythm sections. Um, I played on, on four tracks on this album. It was all mixed up on this. Um, and the stuff I played on, uh, Steve Ferroni, who's, um, I love working with Steve. He's a, he's a great drummer. And he's, you know, he was in Tom Petty's group. He was toured with Clapton, all kinds of people. I mean, he's, he's one of the go-to guys. It was he and Vinnie Cayuta. Uh, sharing drum chairs on the stuff we did. Um, Greg Pagani and Peter Amato were doing keyboards on this. Uh, Corky James, Mike Landau, Michael Thompson, and Robbie Neville uh, were playing guitar and, uh, and myself on bass. Um, so I just wanted to play a couple of songs from this album because it's interesting when you're around somebody who uh, has reached a point in their career and they've decided to move in another direction and there was a certain amount of critical acclaim and, and a certain amount of you know the real hardcore country people kind of going oh you you, you abandoned us <laughs> you know, kind of thing you know you have to allow artists to grow and sometimes they they do things and then they end up coming back to roots um, where they where their career started it just depends you know what what their mood is you don't want to you want to keep moving forward you don't want to just like find one formula and then just repeat it over and over and over, and it's a uh, it's a journey, uh, not the band, but uh, the, the the journey of finding your voice and maturing and aging and ex life experiences. I mean, uh, there was another wonderful singer I worked with when she was a young kid, um, Mandy Barnett. I might go visit some of her stuff. And she, you know, matured into a really amazing artist. But as a child, she had like chops for days. She was really a strong singer. But as as they age, then they have more things to draw from emotionally and and artistically uh, for what they're going to be writing or or the kind of songs they're picking uh, to represent where they're at at this point in their lives. And uh, so I'm going to do a couple of songs here that we did with Leanne Rhymes, and this is again back in 2002. I'll be playing again. I'm I'm, I'm not avoiding playing by any means. Last night I had a great time. I sat and, and I, I I played the night before. I played first half of Phil Collins's show, and then last night I came back in and sat down, and played second half of Phil's show, and then did a whole bunch of new stuff with from the immediate family. I got to wrap my head back around all of our material because we'll be starting to rehearse again at the end of the month once uh, Steve has had his 
incubation period after his second shot. Then we're going to go in and we're going to hunker down for a couple of weeks and just really get our mojo back up and running and then uh, working on new material. Uh, we've got about 10 songs right now that are pretty close to being ready to be recorded. Now, this is even though we have an album coming out August 27th, which we cut before the pandemic and was supposed to be out last November. But needless to say, you know, everything kind of went into a hyper skid at that at that time. Um, so that album will be coming out, but we've, you know, it hasn't stopped the creative process. So we're fortunate that our label, uh, Quarto Valley Records, has uh, it said, we then go in the studio and do another one. We'll have one for the beginning of next year, because hopefully we'll be on the road and working, and this will get us, a, you know, kind of ahead of the game and also other material uh, that we might be able to put in. I don't know if we would do this for the live shows before the album's released. We'll, we'll figure all that stuff out. But... Um, you know, lots of things going on, and as, as things are starting to somewhat feel like there's a comfort zone ahead, my my only concern about everything is any kind of premature jumping on the wagon now, saying, "Okay, you know, we've got shots going out, so let's open everything back up again," um, because there uh, only a small amount of the, you know, the population has really had their shots, and especially when you're looking at like. Young people, you know, you're looking teens to th through 30s. Um, most of them haven't accessed any of this yet. Um, so it's still quite dangerous out there. So let's not get cocky about this and suddenly start partying like it's all over because it's not over. And your health and your family's health uh, are still have to be addressed. So let's take this slowly and, um, and we will get back to it. But, you know, just don't, let's not rush into this stuff and that's it that's it let's play some music here um this is kind of the most country thing i think we we cut as i recall um this is called you made me find myself and this is leanne rhyme so here we go here's some some music to start the day
Now, when we're doing these albums, um, almost never do we have the strings and all of the lush arrangements. We know it's coming, so we think that way when we're recording, leaving space and movement within, within the basic tracks. But it's always fun to hear the stuff after we've left uh, as bass, drums, guitars, keyboards, you know, the basic rhythm section dates, and then hearing the things finished where they've brought in background singers and they've brought in the string section and string arrangements. And uh, it's always fascinating to me because you never quite know what the song's gonna be until you hear it completed. And sometimes there's been a few where I thought, God, if I'd have known they were gonna do that, I would have played a different part because I feel like I'm maybe kind of stepping o over uh, something that, that I didn't realize was going to be there, but it rarely happens like that. Uh, usually we're, we're pretty instinctive about that stuff. But it's, it's a, such a fascinating process of putting records together. Most people um, really don't quite understand the, what goes on in a studio, the whole process from beginning to end. And it's quite complicated. That's like when you watch a movie, even a simple movie where there's only a couple of people in it, and it's you know a bunch of dialogue, and there's not a lot in special effects. Get the credits run, and it's a lot of people involved in in making something simple. And it's kind of the same uh, with recording. There's a lot of steps within uh, the process of making a record, and uh, um, I've always found it just fascinating. It really is one of those things that really keeps your keeps your juices flowing. So um, here's a song called "Damn." <laughs> D-A-M-N. It's not about Hoover Dam or any of those. This is just damn. So here we go.
I'm going to just move right along here. There's, i got two other songs that are really good. One of them is the title track, uh, Twisted Angel, but I can't remember this one. I'm just going to check it out real quick. The Safest Place, it's called. Let's see where we're at with this. This is, I mean, all this stuff is really a, a transition from country into pop. Just I, I'm for me personally. I, I love playing songs like that. There's just like a, a real deep emotional thing that happens within the band when you've got that that kind of song going. But uh, I enjoy it all. I'm not going to limit myself. But I love that last song. Last song here. This is Twisted Angel. This was the title track to the album.
direction for the girl. That's really great. Okay, Leanne Rhymes, Twisted Angel. Um, so a couple things. Um, if you want to check out that Grammy premiere opening montage, uh, look up Mercy Mercy Me um, Gram Grammy pre-show 2021, however they got it. But uh, once you put in Mercy Mercy Me, make sure you get in Grammy in it and then it'll go to it. And Cheche did an amazing job of arranging and, and putting that whole thing together. And uh, so that was great. Also, live stream this week again. I've mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it today and again tomorrow. Is and they're sending out a notice. It's Wednesday this week, not Tuesday, not tomorrow. It's Wednesday because tomorrow I'm doing this uh, show with Peter Asher. Um, all and I'll be gone all day for that. Yeah, we got to rehearse and then do a show in the evening. And I'm really looking forward to it because I've done Peter's show a couple of times and it's a remarkable one man kind of tour de force about his history in the music business from um, Peter and Gordon days, from having McCartney living in his house, hearing Beatles songs before anybody had heard the Beatles. I mean, it's a it's an amazing show and I love doing it. It's a private function, so it won't be televised or streamed or anything like that. But uh, it'll be great to see Peter and Jeff Allen Ross is uh, the... Um, the go-to guy for somebody that can sing, play keyboards, guitar, do everything. Uh, so it'll be fun. It'll be a fun day. So, but that made me bump uh, the live stream to Wednesday. So uh, I'll see everybody who's there on Wednesday, and anybody maybe who ha doesn't know about the clubhouse. All of this is related to the clubhouse. Now, on all these, on all my videos, I try to keep it updated. Sometimes I get a day behind, um, but there's a a link on every video to the clubhouse and also to my website where the book is available, my artwork's available, um, t-shirts, all kinds of crap in there. And uh, both places, the clubhouse and the website have different things. But uh, you can check out the clubhouse and see if you want to come hang with us. We have the most 
wonderful bunch of people that are in that clubhouse and the live stream every two weeks is something I so look forward to because we've become like this incredible family over the past year and I really think of it as our clubhouse. I feel like as much a member as, as anybody on there and we've all started to get into each other's lives and sharing experiences and stuff. It's, it's really cool. It's really made this past year uh, a far more a tolerable um, experience developing all these friendships. Uh, so check it out. And other than that, uh, thank you everybody out there working, like I say every day, all these people in everything, just being at the post office today and seeing those people are there every day, you know, dealing with the public and seeing, you know, all the teachers are trying to open the schools again, but trying to get all the teachers their shots and all this and all the people working in the hospitals and from doctors to janitorial staff. It's all there. So um, I'm noticing this is a long video. So I'm going to get, get out of here and let everybody, you know, get on with your day. And I will see you all tomorrow. Okie dokie. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.